Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. It's good stuff. They get to a very good group. We like that one. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I do if I can shrink the Do we have any additions to the agenda? Comments from visitors regarding agenda items. Uh, chairperson's report, that's me. I don't have anything. Didn't realize it was the chairperson tonight. <laughs> How about you, superintendent? Did you do something? Nothing under chair. I can just go under mine. Go ahead. OK. All right. Good. I will do that then. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's great to see you all here. Messi. Yes. Are, are, were we going to add the to the agenda, or did we get it on for the advertising? Do we need to approve anything? I read through that article. Yep. I don't know if we. I was kind of on the fence if we need to or not. Did, what, what was your take? I don't have an answer right now. Okay. Do we want to put it on and discuss, or? You can sure. Okay. As long as there's a two-thirds vote to add to the agenda, absolutely. Okay. Um, I would like to add to the agenda uh, to discuss, we had a request to put some advertising on some new baseball tarps um, that were going to be donated. Um, the company did not ask the name on it, but in kind, uh, as a goodwill gesture, um, the recipients would like to put their logo on the baseball tarps, just one, and then the other one to have just the East Grammy logo. So if there's a, a first and a second, we can add it to the so. A second the motion. You second the motion? Yeah. But okay. do you want to make it broader and say? Do we want to discuss advertising we, in general? Yeah. Okay. So I'll move to Spons sponsorship, I think. Is discuss what we're advertising for, right? and sponsorship for F. Do we want to restrict it to athletic facilities for now or broad? How broad do we want to go? That seems like a good idea okay. to restrict it to athletic move facilities to right now. We'll discuss our yeah. current policy on advertising and sponsorship for. Athletic facilities. I'll second the amended motion. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, I think everybody was in favor, so I don't need to go on with that. So okay. Add it under 4B, under recommended actions. We'll add, add it under 4B, recommended actions. Actually, under superintendent's report, we essentially have um, some presentations, and that's really what the um, full agenda is for this evening, which is great because we can spend our time uh, listening so, to some phenomenal uh, student presentations, and then we'll be followed with our NIAS report, which are, is our 10-year uh, accreditation report mm -hmm. that Mr. Um, Tony DeMello, our high school principal, will present. So um, Capstone and Mr. DeBell, I think you'll give a little bit of a, okay, an introduction, great. So I will then just welcome uh, Mr. Tony DeMello, high school principal, and welcome to our three students and their families. Um, I have a packet. I hope I have enough. Oh, I did, sorry. Okay, so I have a packet for everyone. The top sheet is our NIAS accreditation letter. So you can just fold that over to the back for now because that would be the second part of our conversation or my presentation. Okay. The second part uh, is titled Capstone Project Student Handbook. Okay. Um, this is more just for the board's reference for later on to peruse through if you have any questions or suggestions for um, for us at the high school after you've taken a look at it if you'd like. So before we get into our three presentations, um, last year we did the same. I believe we had two students come in and present capstone projects to the board. This year it's three. 
Um, I put out a, I put it out to about five students um, that were different types of projects that we were looking at throughout the, the presentations that occurred. Um, one of them was a fire volunteer, but he is there actually doing their drill today, so he couldn't make it. His was pretty interesting because he presented fire safety to our elementary schools. And it was kind of out of his comfort zone, so it was an interesting kind of um, way to connect our students to um, younger students at the elementary schools. But, so just to begin, um, I wanted to give a brief overview of Capstone and where it's coming from. Um, in 2015, the uh, state put out new guidelines, began to talk about new legislation around um, adding credits to a student's high school career, right? So at one point it was 21, then it was bumped to 23, now it's 25. So Public Act number 1742, um, section one, basically states, commencing with classes graduating in 2023, and for each graduating class thereafter, no local or regional board of ed shall permit any student to graduate from high school for granted diploma to any student who has not satisfactorily completed a minimum of 25 credits, including, and then they added section six, or subsection six, a one credit mastery-based diploma assessment. Okay. Mastery-based mastery -based diploma assessment basically means that a student has to present something that they've chosen to begin and conclude and taken steps that the school provides for them in order to show mastery of that subject, okay? Schools are doing it differently throughout the state. There are some schools that are doing portfolios, so they'll make a student go back into their career and pull out different pieces of what they've done throughout their four years and then reflect on that portfolio in a project kind of present or a portfolio presentation at the end of their senior year where they have to talk about everything that they did. Other districts, other schools are doing it so that a student can kind of pick, all right, I did this great science project in 10th grade. So they go back in time, grab that science project, and they talk through what they did to show how they've mastered the different skills that were required of them. So the mastery piece is really interpreted differently throughout the different schools and different high schools and different districts throughout the state. What we chose to do is right before this um, language came out, we had begun looking at a capstone project for, the, for, our, for our high school. And it was morphing and it was kind of becoming a couple of different things. And what ended up working out great for us was when these, this new language came out, when this new mastery-based diploma assessment came out, um, we decided to really connect our capstone to that diploma assessment. So what we did was we took our learning expectations and we decided to connect what students were doing to those learning expectations. So this is year four for us of really looking at a capstone project, but in my opinion, it's year two for us of really being successful at what we've been trying to attempt. Um, we embedded it last school year, 2021-22, into our English class, our senior English course. So now instead of um, students just kind of doing it on their own and being expected to hit guidelines without someone sort of overseeing that, We've added that to our senior or senior English, so our senior English teachers, as part of their requirement, it's embedded into their curriculum. So starting in September, I believe it's in the capstone um, handout. Um, starting in September, they have to each student has to hit specific targets as they're going, with the goal of a presentation come March um, to a small group, usually. Of, of teachers, right? It's either a handful of teachers, some administrators, the superintendent comes. We had two board members come this year. Last year we had a couple of board members come um, and watch, and then everybody scores the presentation based off of a rubric. Our new, our focus going into next year is we're going to change, we're going to, not change, but we're going to look at changing some of our rubric requirements to match our portrait of a graduate, which I believe Mr. Gustafson came in um, at the end of last year to talk about Portrait of a Graduate, and I'm gonna touch a little bit on that with our NIAS report, because that's one of the standards, um, foundational elements for NIAS, is the Portrait of a Graduate. So, really, to be put simply, Capstone for us allows our students to take an idea, right? A passion, a career that they might want to explore, um, something that they, they're sort of doing outside of school, um, really 
something that they're interested in or passionate in, and they're able to explore it more in depth. In depth in terms of the requirements that we've given them, they have to hit as they're going. A certain amount of research hours, they have to find a mentor depending on what it is. If it's community service, they have to be out in the community doing something. If it is a, um, a career exploration, they have to provide us with a pamphlet or they have to provide us with a poster that goes on our career exploration wall. Um, so there's, there's final pieces that they have to hit. Um, some of the, the, hot, the, I guess the hot topics right, that a lot of our students look at a lot do career exploration. And you'd actually, you, I was very surprised, I think most people would be surprised, that a lot of our students go into looking at careers and they're like, yeah, I don't think I want to do that anymore. Because they're not just looking at it like, oh, I went on Google and researched how to be a dentist, right? They're really at the dentist's office looking at people's teeth. You know, we had one student go in and he was like, I don't know if I really want to be a dentist anymore because he was literally sitting next to the dentist as the guy was pulling out teeth from a decaying mouth. And he was like, uh, maybe you got to change my mind. Right? Or how many students might think of wanting to be a teacher? Right? Oh, I love kids when I babysit, but they're not mine. But when I have them every day, I'm kind of like, maybe not. Right? Um, and then we had others who didn't think that they would be into it, but actually walked away pleasantly surprised, and now they want to explore that. Um, or the idea of going into medicine. Right? There's so many different pieces of medicine and a student generally will, will, without this capstone career exploration piece, will say, I want to go into medicine. And then we had students who actually made better college choices based off the career exploration into medicine that they went into. And um, one of those, you know, is kind of like Madeline with some of the chemistry ideas that she was talking about before. So I have three here today. Um, these three students, Really, their capstones were some of our higher level capstones, but they hit on three different types of ideas, right? We have Madeline looking at careers, Brandy who, who jumped into, I mean, Madeline looking into chemistry because that's a passion of hers. Brandy who, who blew us away with this video game-ish kind of exploration, it was amazing. And then Susie who took, um, a passion of hers and, and made it really blossom into, into really getting to know her more, right? Because Susie's a very shy person and then you, you walk in, you walk out of this capstone and you're like, holy cow, right? Like this is, this is somebody completely new to us. Um, so the three of them we, we have here tonight and, and I'm actually really looking forward to them, you know, presenting to you. Um, my only request, which is a request from them, is that they have to hit their senior sunset tonight, <laughs> which I didn't plan this to be with the senior sunset, even though it is um, But they they were they have do it they have not dwindled, but they have kind of shrunk their presentations down a little bit so that they can hit a, a five to eight minute ish time frame that we gave them. You know, because when they're allowed to present for us, we say ten minutes, but they they're so passionate about what they're presenting that it can go on and on. And on. <laughs> Um, which we're okay with because you know it's, it's again we're learning so much about each of them but also about what they're looking at so um, i'll turn it over brandy first okay. essentially a um, interactive narrative um, based story and um, in the form of a video game and uh, I wanted to kind of uh, explore my passions for art and also technology and programming which was a passion when I was younger I used to make like very basic little games when I was a kid but I kind of distanced myself from that passion and went into art a lot illustration digital illustration and I kind of wanted to work on combining those and by 
working on this project, I was able to really understand that this is something I want to do as a career, and I'm actually going to be majoring in game art in college next year, so that's gonna be fun. And um, I worked on uh, doing everything for the game, essentially. Um, I worked on the assets, the visual assets, the art and stuff like that, programming, um, the, uh, the sounds, and uh, things like that. Um, it was, it's taken me um, over a little over 70 hours so far, um, and it is not done yet. This is just a, what I have so far, and I intend to work on it over the summer, and um, it's gonna be like my summer project, and hopefully when I finish it, I'm able to share it with my peers and um, my friends, and I'm just very excited for it. Um, and I also created a, um, a, Sorry, a pamphlet for the bulletin board for the uh, career exploratory thing because this is a career exploration, which is something I want to do. And um, there I just kind of shared what game art's about, salary and stuff like that, and how you would get to be in that field. So I'm just going to kind of share as I tap through this. So um, here's just kind of an example of. Uh, my loading screen, or not the loading screen, the main menu. Um, this took me, it doesn't look like it would take a long time, but it took a really long time <laughs> to figure it out and how to program it and stuff like that. So if you click the title, you'll get um, info, the uh, crediting for the licenses and stuff like that. The program I used um, being RedPy, which is a more-ish uh, program for creating visual novels, which is a specialty using the programming um, <coughs> language Python, which is a very, it's a lot easier to use than other languages, which was very nice. I didn't really know anything about Python. I knew a little bit. I knew about it and some basic things, but I really got to learn about it through this project and how to use it and stuff like that. So you can select options, you can change your text speed, you can um, change the volume, which I have to do. Um, you can do a bunch of all this different stuff <laughs> and uh, load your different saves, which was another thing. And see, so you can highlight the different colors when you go over it with your mouse, which I thought was kind of fun. Um, so it's, like I said, it's a visual novel. So it's a narrative with, um, you know, the more visual video game aspects. So you just kind of tap through. Um, as I get more into programming, I actually learned a couple of weeks ago about a new feature that I really want to put into the game. I want to do more point and click aspects. So, so far it's just like, you know, tapping through, learning more about the story, the characters talking, interacting with the environment, um, you know, sounds and stuff like that. Um, backgrounds as well, which took me a little bit because I am not as strong with um, doing backgrounds digitally. So that was definitely something I have to explore, look at references, um, research online, things like that. Um, took a lot of research with how to implement these assets um, onto the game and in RenPy because um, RenPy, I, I was a little familiar with RenPy when I was uh, younger. I used to kind of play with it a little bit sometimes, but it's really changed over time and I think it's definitely an expanding um, program. To see, <laughs> and this is an example of um, an issue actually I ran up with um, was I was programming too much and I couldn't um, catch up with my art. So because art takes a little bit longer for me than programming parts, so I would do I made thumbnails for the story, which are basically just little sketches of what you plan on doing. So I use those as the assets, just as a placeholder. Um, so I can just keep programming so I don't kind of stop with my production stuff, so I can just keep pushing it out, which was very helpful. That was from the tip of my advisor, who was my father, who has um, a lot of uh, background in programming and things like that, So and art as well. <laughs> so that was pretty helpful. And um, other characters, stuff like that, I worked on um, character design, which was a big aspect, and a big aspect in game art. and. Um, is another interactive thing that took, also took me a while to research. Um, just the point and click type things in games. So if you move your mouse around and you hover over the, the object that you um, need to click to progress in the story, it, 
highlights it, and then once you click it, it takes you on through the narrative. And it's, you can zoom in, you can change oh, uh, different sprites and stuff like that. And sprites are the characters with different expressions for the characters. Um, so if they say something like, positive, they like have a happy face, or if they say something negative, they have a negative face. Um, this is um, one thing that also took me a while. <laughs> um, it was kind of along with the lines of the point and clip, just uh, selecting different pieces of evidence to sift through in the game, because it's kind of a mystery game. Um, so if you click on this little part of a newspaper, it zooms into the paper and you can read a little bit more about it and the character can have commentary on it um, to kind of help you understand the story better. Um, what I have so far, <laughs> and uh, it's really been a big passion of mine, and I've been working on it for the entire year, and I plan to keep working on it, and um, I've got a whole marketing, um, I guess, campaign uh, in ideas and stuff that I want to set out in hopefully October, because that is, you know, Halloween and mystery spookiness and stuff like that. So. Um, uh, seven days before Halloween is hopefully the release date, um, just because this also takes place seven days before Halloween, so I just thought that would be fun. And um, yeah, I've just got a lot of plans with this, and it really, really reinforced the, um, my passion for game art. I originally wasn't going to go to college for game art, I was just going to do illustration, but talking to professors at these um, you know, college visits and open houses and stuff like that, and telling them about my project that I've been working on, um, we were able to kind of come to terms with the fact that I probably should be doing game art if that's what I want to do as a career, um, which was awesome to hear from professors and stuff like that, and from administrators at the schools. So that was exciting and stuff like that. I also submitted this for my college portfolio, and um, a lot of the uh, college reviewers for my portfolio, because you have to submit an art portfolio for our colleges, um, they had a lot of positive feedback, and I got a lot of um, uh, critiques as, as well for this, which was really helpful for completing a capstone and showing to the school for, you know, the final capstone, stuff like that. So, yeah, I think that's it. Um, yeah. Any questions or anything? Yeah. I think you should emphasize that you wrote the story oh, yourself. Yeah. You created the characters, you did all the artwork, you taught yourself programming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not the proud mom. Brandy, <laughs> <laughs> can I ask you a question? When you said it's going to be released, can you tell me what that means? Um, essentially, I'm going to, you know, complete the game. The story is going to be finished. Um, it's playable for everybody, and um, basically my final version of the game. And it's hopefully going to be released on um, a gaming platform or a platform for games, Steam, um, which uh, it can. It's a little like, on the expensive side, but um, I think the the pros overweigh the cons <laughs> for the platform because it helps with marketing and showing it to um, new gamers, I guess, and um, especially helps with indie games such as this because it's just me working on it, <laughs> you know. So. It's very impressive after 70 hours. I, I, with Python, I could hardly get past Hello World. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. And where are you going next year, Brandy, for school? Champlain in Burlington, Vermont. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So any questions or? Just the excitement that you have and the passion is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just X out? Oh yeah, do whatever you gotta do. I just minimized it, so if you just, awesome. it'll work. All right, hello everyone. My name is Madeline Tracy, and I did my capstone project on a career exploration into chemistry at the Feinstein Institute for Medical Research. So the Feinstein Institute for Medical Research is located in Manhasset, New York. The main goals of the Feinstein Institute are to cure and treat Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, and inflammation. 
And the institute does this both through working directly with patients and in what we call wet labs, which is like just working in the laboratory. Um, my uncle is the CEO and president of this institute, so that gave me a really great opportunity to spend a day in his laboratory in the institute and work with different chemists and scientists to learn what a day in the life is as a chemist, because that's been one of my passions for a long time, and this career exploration gave me a chance to figure out if that's what I want to do in the future. Um, yeah. So my community component for my project was mostly based in education. I spent a lot of time before actually traveling to the institute, um, learning about what the life of a chemist is, what the qualifications are, and all those different kinds of you know, information. And I compiled that into the pamphlet that you can see up there. And this pamphlet can be used by anyone who has similar interests to kind of figure out what this looks like without actually having to go through the project like I did. My day at the Institute started with a tour of the laboratory. Um, I was introduced to most of the scientists that work there, and for the morning I was paired with a young woman named Ariel. And she led me through what we, what's called the dilution experiment, and I'll talk about that more later, um, of a chemical called choline, which I completed in the morning and then repeated in the afternoon without any help. So in the morning she walked me through it, we talked about what it all meant, <coughs> And then in the afternoon, I was challenged to repeat the experiment without any help. So that was <laughs> really, really cool and a big deal for me. Um, in the afternoon, I also talked with multiple of the other scientists and chemists in the laboratory about different topics like cell culture, electromagnetic stimulation, natural selection, and optogenetics, which are all very, very interesting topics. I know a little bit about some of them if anyone wants to ask, but... <laughs> um, the first learning expectation that I completed in this capstone project, so I don't know if Mr. DeMello talked about this, but in capstone we're challenged to complete two learning expectations, so one of the uh, components of the project is explaining how we've done that. Um, the first learning expectation that I completed was learning expectation four, and this expectation focuses on the application of scientific concepts and critical thinking skills to reach logical and reasoned conclusions. And I did this mostly through the experiment that I completed. So this was a dilution experiment, which basically means you start with a very concentrated level of, of a chemical, and then you move the chemical into separate vessels to create a more diluted uh, solution of the chemical. And I did this with the, with the chemical choline, which is found in the brainstem, which is commonly um, referred to as the center of inflammation in the body, but it is also found in the blood, which makes it the most ideal chemical to test in my uncle's laboratory. So that's what I did my experiment on. And during this experiment, I had to learn multiple different skills that I had never learned before. I was dealing with microliters, which is a much smaller um, unit of measurement than we typically use in a high school chemistry class. And in order to use microliters, I had to learn how to micropipette. So this involved uh, learning how to calibrate micropipettes and when to dispose of the tips of them and whatnot. And that was really, really cool. That was one of my favorite parts. You can see in the pictures, the, um, there's a couple, that picture on the left is, had some pipettes in it. I also learned how to use well plates. And you can see those in the pictures on the right. And the clear well plates on the piece of white paper are passed through what we call, what's called a spectrometer, which passes light through those well plates to show the concentration of a chemical in the solution. Um, so I had to learn how to move microliters of solution in between or from each of those well each of those wells in the well plate to the next well plate to dilute the solution, which were all new skills that I'd never learned before. So that was it was cool to test the knowledge that I already had and to learn new knowledge. Here's some graphical evidence that I completed this learning expectation. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk mostly about the graph at the bottom because I think for me it's the most, it's the easiest to understand. As you can see, um, the optical density of my solution only reached one and that bar on the last point represents the, um, the range of values that that point could represent. So it wasn't a very accurate experiment that I completed in the morning, I'll be honest. It wasn't super precise, but in the afternoon, it was a much more precise experiment. So my optical density reached four, and as you can see, that bar on the last point is much smaller. So I improved in my skills, and that is shown here. So 
second learning expectation that I completed was learning expectation eight, which focuses on identifying personal interests and planning for areas of strength and areas of growth. In just choosing this project, I definitely uh, recognized my interests, began to um, act on them, and plan for my future. Um, sorry, I gotta find my place. <laughs> Um, after experiencing the life of a chemist for a full day, I'm certain that this path is the one that I want to pursue. And since this project, I have named chemistry as my major in college and plan to go into chemistry after my time in college. Um, one of my favorite parts of my experience at the Feinstein Institute was definitely um, the amount of fun and teamwork that I witnessed at the laboratory, which I was not expecting. Um, after talking to a lot of the scientists, they all said that every single day they were doing something different. Between planning experiments and completing those experiments or presenting their findings, it was always, they were always doing something engaging. Um, I also got to witness a lot of the mentor-mentee relationships that occurred in the laboratory. So younger scientists would put together their findings and give them to older scientists to be like, does this make sense? Like, was my experiment right? Like, whatnot? So, that was also something that I wasn't expecting and something that pulled me towards the idea of pursuing chemistry even more in the future. I did have some challenges um, with this project. On the day that I was supposed to travel to the Feinstein Institute, there was a torrential rainstorm. And I planned to drive there by myself, but we decided that wasn't the best idea. So my mom drove me to the train station and I took the train by myself for the first time, which was awesome and gave me a chance to learn a bit more about, you know, what that looks like and to kind of be on my own in that kind of a setting. So that was a challenge that I overcame. Another challenge I overcame was simply being able to absorb all the information that was being thrown at me throughout the day. Like it was a very long day of just constant new information and being able to comprehend that all was definitely a challenge, but one that I feel as though I overcame. I believe my project was very successful. I set out to figure out if this was the career that I wanted to go into, and I figured out that it was the career I wanted to go into. I developed new skills, like new scientific abilities, communication and confidence, and in retrospect, there's nothing I would have done differently. So overall, I feel it was very successful. So thank you all. Now, can you share what your plans are for next year? Yes, so I will be attending the University of New Hampshire, uh, majoring in chemistry and participating in the Air Force ROTC. So I'll be doing chemistry in the Air Force after college. Hi guys, my name is Suzanne Figueroa, and um, sorry, I'm going to go For my project, I decided to complete the animation on thanking everybody who welcomed me to the school in this district. Um, first of all, I'd like to um,
Excuse me. Just relax your nose. Relax. I know you're very shy, but it's okay. My hand keeps going. Um, Take a deep breath and start over. I don't like that I've changed the districts many times from, but none has been as impactful from my change from Hartford Public School to Dave's Community. It was hard. Don't be sorry. Okay. Take your time. Take your time, Susie. I went from being a little in a big, kind of big school to knowing almost everybody's name in my grade. Susie, we can't hear you, honey. So was it, would it be helpful if maybe someone read for that for you? Would that help? I'm going to dry my eyes, but... Susie! <laughs> 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 so she gets so nervous. She gets so Susie, do you want yeah. me to help read? Would that be helpful or not? always been a passion of mine ever since I was in middle school. I began to take art seriously as something I would want to pursue. My biggest inspiration is Dax Dauber. That's so cool. A small artist who makes short animations and music to go along with them. These songs are a part of a genre called micropop, which I find extremely fascinating and fun to listen to. I also draw inspiration from my art teacher, Mrs. DeGray. We all love Mrs. DeGray. Mrs. DeGray is a hardworking woman and teaches so many art classes. I find it inspiring and I look up to her as a role model of someone of, of somewhere I would want to be later in my life. I hope my short animation can give students and peers insight of how others may feel when they are just moving to a new environment. It can be extremely difficult to cope with a big environment change and I believe if people are made aware of the emotions that it can cause, it could help with behavior and mental well-being of a child and teenager. Okay. I've challenged myself multiple ways throughout the project, especially with my animation skills. It it took a lot of learning, like of different principles. There are twelve different animation principles, such as slow and slow out, and there's there's a lot of timing, especially with alongside the music. And this is a short animation, like a loop animation I made showing on screen of a girl dancing. One of my learning expectations was to demonstrate creative expression through the communication of arts or the arts. And I created an animation which is a moving picture and it creatively demonstrates my feelings towards the people I care about most. I believe that the job of demonstrating creative expression through the arts by adding small details and subjects that have more than one meaning. And these are, this is a scene from the animation I made. It's a dark cloud that symbolizes the emotional distress from changing school environments. This expresses the depression and loneliness I felt in the first few days of attending school. The black shapes and forms of people symbolize the others I truly, I will never know and truly won't ever get to know. The opportunity to really like this to show the you unknown. Know, My second learning presentation was to demonstrate an understanding of the impact of culture and linguistic, and linguistic diversity in our global society. And I made it so my animation shows the changes of culture, culture in the school and how my friends hope me to adapt. Showing the welcoming culture of the school is, I show the welcoming culture of the school by um, drawing a figure that symbolizes my friends that come comforting me in that time of need. Additionally, I hope I give a new perspective to current students at Eastbury. I decided to 
include a slide on the impact of cultural change on youth um, as a vector for youth development and civic engagement, culture plays an essential role in promoting sustainable social development for future generations. Personal experience, changing schools and towns multiple times has had a huge impact on my social life and my emotional life. Um, a lot of a lot of it. A lot, a lot of my memories from changing schools are not fun. But when I got to this school, I felt a big change in a new chapter. That's the and I really appreciate everybody here. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna show you guys the animation I made. when I was watching yours and kind of with, with Brandy, so this is the first time I saw Brandy, so you were explaining how every one of those little clips, like all of the interactions that go for each, like you said, there's 12 elements, right? And I remember sitting with you because you were going through them, showing them, um, you know, uh, multiple ones, like in her full program. So and I'm assuming Brandy, because a lot of what you said also was well over my head. Um, but I'm, you know, every piece, right, has a number of components that come together. Yes. So that's fantastic. And what are your plans for next year? I'm going to UConn for digital media and design. 
I think is what's so amazing with the capstone projects is um, you know students that come through East Granby they start speaking and public speaking and you know because it's very nerve-wracking I mean people will say to me and I mean I have graduation speech that I already started writing like a month ago for you guys because no matter what it's a very nerve-wracking experience um, and we see such growth um, you know in our students you know th I don't even want to say by the time you get to high school because it happens, you know, so much earlier with their understanding of, of speaking and comfort level and, and kind of taking on that challenge because anybody that has spoken publicly and it doesn't matter if it's a smaller, you know, group or a large group, it is very you know, nerve wracking. So I give you the three of you huge credits for coming out. Um, especially when you're here and it's kind of like a formal setting, right? When you did your capstone, we were in one little classroom, you knew everyone that was there, um, a little bit more comfortable. So this is, you know, a huge, um, you know, step and I, I give you all, you know, credit for doing that. You did a, a great job. So, and, and Susie, your story came through about your move and it came through through art. So, you know, you did a great job. This was very impressive, you guys. It really was. They were just, the, your capstone projects were so well done, so intelligent, so well thought out. Um, I think you've demonstrated a lot of courage and teamwork being here all together, and really, really appreciate it. Thank you for coming and sharing with us. Thank you, guys. The great things Thank that East Grampy High School is doing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mr. Tamello, can you snap a photo of them together for me? Is there, is there <laughs> Mr. Tamello in the photo? The three of you are heading to a sunset somewhere? Is yeah, that yeah, the yeah. Your sunset is yep. tonight. And where is it? At the farm. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you better get out of here. You don't want to see your Mr. Tamello's presentation. You've been here a long time. Until sunrise. Nope, it's totally fine, actually. And you know, so little funny side story, M Mr. Engel always wanted to be a dentist. So if he had a capstone back when he was in high school, maybe he wouldn't be our business manager right now. He would have turned into the, uh, the dentist. So. I was wondering what was going on over there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, you're welcome to stay, but I know you have things to do. And we'll get out. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations thank to all of you. Have fun. Thank thank you. You. Families, thank you. Parents, thank you. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good job. Good job, girl. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's just three of the many. I mean, we had 72 yep. this year. Um, we're still working on one. We're going to get this last one in. Um, but out of the 72, right? Um, and again, those are three. And um, just different, you know, different kids, different things that they were doing. And again, we did, we had accountants, right? CPAs, that was fun. Um, we had coaches, we had a lot, right? <laughs> there were a lot of topics and a lot of ideas that were way up above my head too. I mean, when, like Madeline as an example, when she really got into the nitty gritty of things that she was doing, I had no idea what she was talking about, and that was great, right? But she did, she was passionate about it, so that, that's part of it. Did the CPA one come literally after the pulling the teeth one? No, no, the CPA one, actually the CPA one was fantastic because he really kind of broke down the different pieces of accounting and his passion for like going into it made us all kind of like excited about it. Like he, he's passionate about it. We're happy to have those people. Involved. Yeah, I mean, it's, can, I, can I say his name? Sure. Brady Gill. Oh, yeah. okay. He is like like into it. Like he was like excited about it, like going into that field. And I was like, all right, like, so am I. <laughs> but just just like that, right? I mean, we had, like I said, we had a multiple myriad of um, various types of projects. And, and again, next year, I'll let everybody know. We'll invite you again. You're more more than willing. Um, more than, um, please come. They're cool. I think they're cool. Um, and we're trying to actually expand them in terms of figuring out a way to sort of do them as like a gallery, 
Um, there's districts that do them as larger galleries where students are presenting them in different rooms and they can have sort of like a rotation and you can go around and check out different ones. The hard part there we have to try to figure out is sort of doing it with fidelity so that, you know, the students that didn't do really kind of hands-on, you know, visual ones, like how do we still allow them to, to get the credit they deserve, you know, that also go with something like this, right? Some of these that are easier to put up on, on a screen and kind of engage an audience with. So we're, we're trying to figure that part out. Okay, so on to the fun, the really, really fun stuff. Um, congratulations, we are NEASC accredited. Yay! Yay! Um, so just to kind of go over, NEASC is New England Association of Schools and Colleges. Um, we go through a 10-year, every school goes through a 10-year process of becoming and staying accredited. Um, it all starts, um, well, we, this, the letter that's a part at the front part of your packet, um, the hand, the capstone packet, that is the actual letter that was sent to us from the ASC state that we are accredited and that we are accredited without having any areas of need, um, which is a very big yep. piece. Most, most of the time, I shouldn't say most, I don't want to you know, generalize, but um, a lot of the times you can come back and they will provide you with areas of need or focus areas that you have to work on to kind of improve. Um, and schools use that as, as conversation um, to have with the board, to have with their constituents in town to kind of work through aspects that, that, that NIAS believes the building needs or that our school needs to kind of become a better school um, environment for teaching and learning. So just to explain the process. Um, we had a collaborative conference in, in the fall of 2020, which is a very awkward collaborative conference because it was right after COVID, COVID had come out. They, we were walking around with, there were actually two people there that were in person, and then everyone else was on a computer screen. So they were walking around with Chromebooks and laptops, like going to classroom to classroom and visiting and things like that. So you know, they were talking to us through screens, which was a very interesting sort of hybrid process of you know, I'm, I'm very happy that that's not the way the future kind of went. Um, you know, stop and shop robots, as my son likes to call them. Um, so we then self-reflected. That was part of the collaborative conference. Our job was to self-reflect on the five foundational elements of NIAS. Um, then on top, after that, we then had two years to work on the areas of need that were reflected in that collaborative conference. So the collaborative conference came back and basically what they said to us was, you did a good job reflecting, so work on the areas that you reflected on. So one of the areas that we reflected on was the district's need or our need for a portrait of a graduate, which um, Mr. Gustafson was in at the end of last year talking about. Um, and another component was our scientific research-based intervention process, which is SRBI or RTI. Um, the difficult part for our school that we've learned um, is that we don't look like other schools because we don't have thousands of kids and kids don't get lost, is, is how we kind of like to put it. Um, so our SRBI process is a lot more um, hands-on, right? We're not necessarily in, uh, I had a, a parent once say, you're not triaging kids. Um, you're not saying, oh, let's work on this kid and then go to this kid and then go to that kid. When we, when we are able to identify a student that might need extra help, we are on top of that student pretty quickly. Um, if they haven't already been identified in our elementary school into our middle school to come to the high school. So the, the uh, NEAS team kind of realized that and they tasked us with figuring out um, a new way of sort of adding that by also um, asking us to, to really focus on finding interventions, intervention specialists, one person that could kind of help, you know, pick up those kids when they needed it um, with their teaching and learning, through teaching and learning. Um, another area was providing teachers more time um, for them to work on looking at data. Um, we decided afterwards to look at the uh, professional learning community model, the PLC model, which allows our teachers to get together once a month um, after school to focus on areas of need for stu specific students. So that can be certain formative um, and summative assessments that could have to do with social emotional learning, that could do with just really putting together, you know, looking at the ninth graders as a ninth grade team. Um, so that's one of the areas there. So 
Moving on two years later, they showed up this fall in October. Um, they, that was considered the decennial visit. The accreditation team came and spent three days in our building touring, speaking to very various groups. Um, they spoke to the Board of Ed. Um, they spoke to teachers, to students, there were parents involved. Um, and then they, while they were there for those three days, they spent time analyzing and rating. And then they presented to our faculty and then formally presented us the findings um, sent in a letter of, ac of accreditation. We, their findings basically, we were meeting, we were rated as meeting all foundational elements for accreditation, which is, a, like I said earlier, a pretty big deal. Um, NIAS provided us with nine commendations. Um, nine out of, the, I think there's 10 on that list, but the nine are definitely um, on that letter. There's, they're the dashes, all the positives that they saw that, that we were doing. Um, they provided us with three areas of recommendation. So again, the three areas that we self-reflected on and recognized as areas of need or growth for our building, they again said, yes, you got better, but you can continue getting even better with them. Um, one of them was our portrait of a graduate. They want us to build the five competencies of our portrait of a graduate more into our curriculum for each class and to also look at rubrics and how our rubrics reflect portrait of a graduate. So more in terms of you know, language around the competencies of communication, collaboration, um, how to define what an empowered citizen looks like. They want us really to kind of dive into that. And then how can we spread that information throughout the rest of our, our learning in the building. So one of them is, a good example is our capstone project, right? Can we add more thinking and language around portrait of a graduate? Should our students have there should there be a slide in their project that's dedicated to portrait of a graduate. So they're talking to how I'm hitting these different pieces. Um, and then, like, like I said earlier, the professional learning community, and then continuing with how to build our SRBI program um, so that it, it, it's really all encompassing and that we are doing the best that we can for the students that, that are in our building. Um, last, overall, we found that it was an excellent way to self-reflect and grow as a building. We believe that it allows us to continue learning to a, we allows continued learning to occur, getting perspectives from multiple stakeholders. That's always very important. Um, we don't want to live on an island, right? We want to be able to get info from everybody around us to become better because we we are we are putting out a product, right? We are putting out students that can function in the real world after four years and the more input we get into that the, the better our students will come will be as they walk across that stage later on um, and then the last piece was it really helps us keep and like i was just saying keeps the students at the forefront of everything that we do um, so that we don't get caught up in our in our own kind of building we are again looking at what what the community needs for our students need. so really that just is a long version of the fact that we did really well on the ask and that the town should be very proud of our students um, and that the, the, really what we're doing at this school. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, congratulations. Yeah, thank congratulations. You. Well, congratulate, you know, it's more congratulations for all of you because mm -hmm. the board runs the, the show <laughs> and then uh, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Kirshner, as well, for helping set up. Hmm? Oh, so oh, thank you, Dave, sure. as well, yeah. Yeah, he's the man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Do you think we're still on the superintendent's report? Oh, we are. Yeah. yeah. We are. <laughs> yes. Uh, 3C M&J transportation contract, we're actually going to table that right now. Uh, the contract uh, was provided to uh, M and J last week, and they are still going through it. And it looks like we might have some couple more negotiating points before we're ready to discuss an executive session for approval. Okay. And that's our report. Okay. Uh, recommended actions. I guess I'm, we're gonna I'm have. I'm sorry, oh. Missy. On that, you sent you sent two copies. You sent a red line version, and then you sent. What I think is a clean copy. I Correct. Think this is the clean copy. Yes. And then the, the red line version is that from the prior contract? It's from the original contract. From, from the prior agreement with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I follow it all through, I would, 
aside from driving myself crazy. Yeah, I wouldn't even. I, I, I could give you a clean copy of the original contract. If and when we go into executive session, is I mean, is Kyle going to, or is someone going to give the uh, the board the uh, highlights? You know, the ten minute. Uh, we did not ask Kyle to. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm assuming he's he's been negotiating with M and J on this. I've been going to negotiate. You have. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kyle rewrote the entire contract. The, the prices have changed from what they were before. Pricing doesn't change, but terms and conditions throughout have changed from the original contract. So there's some sticking points that were negotiated. I mean, is it? I'm, I'm not looking for the board to, to have to sit there and analyze the contract. And I can give certainly, you the certainly. Uh, Once we get it finalized, I'll, I'll give you the skinny. <coughs> That would be all I'd be looking for, just so that you know when we do actually discuss it, yep. it comes forth to the board because we do actually have to. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. We provide the red line copy just so you could see the changes if people were interested. Because sometimes they'll see a clean copy and want to know well, what was the right. original, and, and you can look at the two. Um, mm -hmm. But we thought it might be for some people like to see the red copy, so you can actually kind of go through and. See the change. Some of us like to see the page and a half executive summary. <laughs> yes. Can't please them all, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> Do my best. But no, if we were in executive session, we would be discussing the highlights, correct? Right. This was just provided you in advance. All right, so it was part of recommended actions to approve the contract, which we're now done doing. So should we move that to agenda for future items mm -hmm. and make it 5B? Yep. I'll add that there. Thank you. All right, so we're to the point where we can discuss the sponsorship um, advertising for athletic events, or athletic teams, sorry, or addition to the uh, agenda from earlier this evening. I'll start us off. Yeah. So I'll just give you a quick background. Um, Friends of East Granby Baseball, um, Bank of America made a donation to them. Um, Peoples. Sorry. Yes, Peoples in town. Peoples. Oh, okay. Was, it wasn't. We Bank don't even America. have one of those within how many miles anymore? Okay. Uh, so Peoples made a, a donation uh -huh. um, for, and it's going to be used for new tarps. Uh, currently, they have some old tarps that I were, was told fell off the back of a truck somewhere. Um, so, they're, they've been using these, but they want to get some nice looking tarps, uh, mainly for the pitching mound and home plate. Um, I have some uh, graphics of what it would look like. It's a small People's logo and a nice size East Granby Crusader. Uh, looks really nice. Going to be done in purple. Um, People did not ask for any recognition or anything, but Friends of East Granby Baseball would like to make a gesture to them and put their logo at the bottom of the tarp. Um, reading through, Missy did send me the um, policy on it, and I'm reading through, and I, I feel it falls more under the category of sponsorship rather than advertising. Um, and the way I interpret it, it doesn't sound like we need to there are things that it cannot be, and it doesn't fall into any of those things. I don't see any issue with it. If it was strictly advertising, I think they have to write a request to the superintendent, but I feel it's more of a sponsorship by definition in our policy. Um, so I just wanted to discuss it because I think that's more of a, I don't know, maybe a Kyle thing to interpret. That, that's a lot of policy. There's like three pages on this. Um, is there a quick definition for sponsorship so, versus advertising? Yeah, so advertisements, um, let's see up here, definitions, advertisement, any payment or money or other economic benefit to the school or to the district that requires visual, audio, voice, data, electronic, online, and or video placement of a name, slogan. So right there, I'm, it, they're not requiring anything. The term advertisement does not include traditional fundraising activities such as walk-ons, magazine sales, or food sales, nor does it apply to outright gifts. To which no quid pro quo is attached. As I mentioned, they did not even request it. 
Then under sponsorship, any payment of money or other economic benefit to a school or to the district in exchange for recognition. Again, there was really no exchange for recognition, but that was the closest definition I feel that it falls into. Um, so advertisements does require a written request. Um, and under sponsors, the only thing that was restrictive, the board encouraging district staff to seek sponsorship to help support district programs and services, but no sponsorship agreement shall require that the district's programs and services be delivered in a specific manner. So they're not telling us that we have to use the TARP seven out of seven days and it has to be on display. They can't do that, which they're not. The sponsor may be acknowledged in school district publications. The acknowledgement should be tasteful and may not minimize or take away from the district's role or responsibility for the activity or service. So it's very vague. Can we go back to the beginning? Are they donating the full value of the TARPs or are they contributing towards the purchase of? They gave, they made a donation to Friends of East Cranby Baseball. I don't think they told them what to do with it. It like was, towards the whole field renovation, the yes, money that was... Yes, it could so. be towards the field. It was for baseball at the high school. Is there like a threshold of percentage of the value of the project or anything like that that would I, be valuable I, to consider in any way? I'd, I'd have to ask that. I think it's just they gave them a lump sum of money and yeah. said this needs to go towards this project. Oh, I thought they donated the tarps. So yeah, they donated they, money. They and donated then the, money. Okay. And Friends of East Cranby Baseball. They, Baseball. they just like to acknowledge. Yes. The and they want to, the, the next thing they're on the list the tarps what they with it. Yeah. Right. They want to use the tarps. And they want to buy tarps. And Friends of East Cranby Baseball, my understanding. Don't would, would people's bank is the, be okay with using it on that? Do they want their name on tarps? Yeah, I'm sure she's asked. Um, yeah. My understanding is people is, is somewhat indifferent about the whole thing. Yeah. They're, just, they're just doing it as a, as a donation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm concerned about it in that I think that it, if, if in fact that's a policy that we have, I think it's great. And I think that, you know, let's, let's, let's face reality, if we could get other people too, yes. which we have, um, mm -hmm. there was a, a very generous donation that was made by um, a local town resident um, and there was an acknowledgement made in the sense that uh, they, they allowed for um, a young man to throw out first pitch at the uh, opening game. It was just a great moment um, in East Granby baseball. And I thought, geez, why don't we have this gentleman's name, you know, somewhere, somewhere. you know? And I, I'm, don't get into it too much, but why can't we do that? Why can't we acknowledge and 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 that's all I think that Friends of East Granby Baseball is looking to do with this people's situation. They're not looking to you know shake them down for any that any bit more. They just want to say thank you, and they want to say thank you in a way that would that would you know. And and in the back of my head, I had this like memory of years ago at the middle school, the softball field. Didn't they used to have signs out there? I know the little league does, and I know the town. You know, I I don't recall. So if that it the was, it was the town a has while sponsorship ago. opportunity for um, for East Granby Little League, yeah. and they have signs uh, at East Granby Farms at the uh, at the diamond there. And I'm thinking, why doesn't East Granby? You know, uh, back in the day, you know, in in, in the dark ages, um, my high school had a you know a electronic scoreboard which was brand new, we had the old flip around, you know, the guy would hang up the numbers, you know? Suddenly. Six and, you know, <laughs> score a touchdown, someone would have to hang a six. But Pepsi-Cola went and, you know, donated a sum that was enough to put up an electronic scoreboard. And I'm saying to myself, geez, why would that be any different in, you know, in the 21st century, why would it be any different between a, you know, that was private school, private school, public school. Why wouldn't we acknowledge people sponsoring and, and you know? I think it would open, I mean, if we allow it and it's in the middle of the field, people see it, other yeah. local, I mean, we have a lot of local small businesses and they see it and they're like, 
how do I get my name on there? Yep. So then I started asking the questions, well, these guys donated this, so yeah. you want to sign out there? We're looking for... I think it would be important to establish what the thresholds are yep. to get, well, you know, like any kind of sponsorship. More advertising, I think. Right. And so if we're establishing yeah. thresholds, well, then is it purchasing advertising, which it becomes a separate Yeah, that's, thing. A, that's a fine line there, John. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, the yeah. picture you think that comes off and the game goes and you don't see it. No one else sees it. Yeah. And if, the, and if the scoreboard that you could actually see out in center field yep. just said, you know, I'll use Bank of America, but it just says Bank of America. It doesn't need to, doesn't need to have a, a website, doesn't need to have a phone number, doesn't it need to have local address. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to use any of our local businesses, but there's local businesses that, you know, why couldn't, why couldn't the tennis courts be the Acme tennis courts? I, I just anybody who picks up that bill would be nice. Yeah, well, yeah. Name those yeah. tennis courts whatever you want. For six hundred grand, you bet. <laughs> you get my point. Well, not anything. But you get my yeah. point. Yeah, you know, as long as it's you know, yeah. tasteful I mean, and within yeah. core values. Of so the I don't know. I, I, yes. I don't know what the policy is, and I, I'd be I'd be curious what the policy is. I I don't okay. see anything that prohibits us from doing it. I don't even know if we need to vote on anything. Um, but we can comb through the policy more detailed in the future. But if we would, so I kind of wanted to get a feel, because I do want to get this art submitted and get the tarps made. If no one has any red flags or anything, then I would feel confident enough to allow them, to give them the green light and if we had to vote on something, it was kind of just getting a feel from the board if anyone would have any objections from it, if we find anything in policy, which through my first read through, I couldn't find anything that would prohibit this specific thing. So just a couple of questions. I think I need to clarify some things. So I, th I thought when we started the conversation, it was People's Bank and the Friends of East Granby Baseball gave large donations. People's Bank has asked nothing of us, but the Friends of East Granby Baseball yep. would like their name on the gesture. tarps. Yeah. Okay. All right. East like, Granby, the yeah. Friends of East Granby Baseball are the ones that received <laughs> get the donation, the gift from Peoples. Okay. So there, it's not two separate donations. No. It's, it's no. the donation. The, the, the so, receiver is East Gran Friends of East Granby Baseball. The giver is Peoples Bank. Gotcha. Okay. And in a good faith gesture, yep. they are turning around and if they're going to buy a tarp for the home plate area, yep. they would like to put the People's Bank logo on that tarp. Even just to say doesn't care. thank you. Just yeah. it, okay. it's it's it baseball say group you saying yep. thank you. As opposed We're to acknowledging the fact mm -hmm. this yeah. is our way of saying thank you by giving you recognition by putting it on this tarp that we're putting yeah. for home plate area. Okay, so thank you. Area. Thank you for that clarification. I, look, I somewhat agree with Lisa. Should there be some parameters around this before we start slapping logos? <laughs> well, I, I was, as you were speaking, though, I was, yeah. if, we, if it says thank you to for you know your contribution, then you're identifying it as a sponsorship thank a thanks thing as opposed to if you just have a business logo. Then, in my mind, I'm not a lawyer. That seems you, more like advertising. If you said a gift from a gift from or thank you to for the contributions from or it, I mean, if that's what we're trying to do, is acknowledge the the gift. It, seems like that might make sense. And that takes it further away from the slippery slope of advertising, I think. But yeah, again, I'm not I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I guess. I guess just say courtesy of. I thought just the logo. Or with gratitude. I, was thinking, I just think yeah, the logo yeah, as long as logo on there. there. Yeah, you know, it, it doesn't have What's anything that? that's it's other than the fact that there's a logo sports. sitting on it. Maybe People's Bank is getting into the baseball tarp business too. <laughs> And they just happen to put, just like Nike. <laughs> so should it be across that wonderful bridge when it comes that we're going to have an onslaught of all these business sponsorships yeah. that people want to There's donate these things? I, I'm just saying, like, so nice? would, wouldn't it be a wonderful problem to have at that point? Would we establish some sort of threshold? in town that have said they would be more than happy to help yeah. do the athletic facilities here in town. Who said that? There are a number of businesses that have said they would like to contribute to that, but there are stipulations that may prevent that from happening. 
it's something along the lines of um, advertising and whatnot and getting their names out there. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Okay. So it, it's, it's something that we so have I just to understand. Uh, we have to set up guidelines before we ever go down this path. I, I think, think right. I absolutely that's think that's correct. That's true. You know, I absolutely we, think that's correct. If we have this is the first of what could potentially be many to come. Or at least I think you're alluding to that. So I think before we say yes on this, we maybe need to sit down and do our homework, our due diligence, to say, okay, here's the parameters that we are envisioning here and now yep. going forward. The guidelines because we don't know what we don't know yet. But if we, at least we try to say, we're trying to put a framework together here that helps us go down this path as well as we can. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna modify it if things come up that, oh wow, we didn't think of that. But at least it's a, it, it's a starting point. It gives us some, some guide rails. I agree with you, so I just wanted to say that first. I don't know then I was asking Missy over here <laughs> in a sidebar whether public schools do this sort of thing, and I think your answer was yes. There's a lot of them out there yeah. that do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe our policy, and I, I'm trying to remember in my head whether it's sponsorship or advertisement, that there's like a um, kind of an outline of what they need mm -hmm. to submit to, that specifies kind of what they're doing. But people's not really asking, so no. you know this is coming That's through. Um, but I am thinking of what Mr. Welsh just said as well, like what kind of the parameters for what level of donation. Um, I, I I don't know what they donated. I don't know what this individual donated. Um, but if we're looking at it as um, kind of a future, you know, do you have kind of the purple band? Do you have the white band? Do you have the, you know. I feel like the library has different but, levels yeah, of sponsorship. I, I get. I, I don't. I don't know the answer. Being a small town, and one of the core principles we have of a small town is supporting local and everything. If you set wickets to meet to make this size sign, you're kind of penalizing the little guys. So Pepsi could drop a hundred thousand dollars, and it's a drop in the bucket to them where a local HVAC guy, that his, give him, if he made $5,000, that's, you look at percentages compared to Pepsi's P&L, it's significantly more. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you wanna railroad it into that sort of thing, or do we wanna help support local well, I don't think we've decided on anything. No, I know, but I just so, I don't. Like, I don't, I don't know, think it's. I it, it doesn't have to be. If you pay this much, you get this big yeah. thing. But it needs to serve some discussion, I think, yeah. before. Like you, I agree with Lisa and Mark. I think it deserves some discussion before we go putting logos on things, especially since it's not People's Bank that's asking. And they're not necessarily a local business either. Not anymore. They donate a lot to they're, community events. They're in South Hadley, that's where they're main. Yeah. Yep. They were one of the largest, do I, I headed up the, uh, the fir inaugural uh, first golf tournament for the fire department. They were one of the large sponsors, didn't even ask questions, and they even offered to send out a team to help work the tournament and stuff. They're very active in their local community. Well, that's uh, community mm -hmm. spirit. But that's just my, that's just my opinion. I don't think anybody else has really given their opinion as to whether we should put this logo on or not, or maybe we have. I understand what you're saying, you know, because yeah. it, it does. There's a slippery slope, and you know, you look at. I'm watching the. I'm watching the Seattle Mariners play the Atlanta Braves, and and on the arm patch of the Major League Baseball now. team. Major League you know, started was advertising quickery. on their patches now on their sleeves. Quick free concrete, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Turn it into yeah. NASCAR. Kroger and yeah, yeah, exactly. Cincinnati Reds yeah, that, have yeah. Kroger's on their sleeves now. Yeah. That a lot of baseball yeah, I, teams are doing it now know that the first year. To say that's preposterous, but but maybe not so, you know. But, so I so I, I see your point for sure. Is it possible to keep the old tarps on? And then we can Well, from Ricky's point of view, if he just went out and did it and even didn't put the logo on now, you know, they wouldn't be unhappy. No. No. 
I, I mean, she even said that if she yeah. said if there's any contention, we just won't put people's logo on it um, yeah. and just do the East Granby with the and, Crusader and, and sort it out from there and I don't make know it up to something make it up go to back. And, I don't know how they print on these tarps. What well, technology or, they use? Or, Maybe they could add it, or it could be done someplace else. Yeah, you know, I mean, because it was a general donation. It wasn't the tarps. So. Yep. Yeah, you, you can put the people's logo in the batting circle later. <laughs> Mow it into the outfield. That's right. Uh. <laughs> There's lots of things you, you haven't do seen later in the outfield. Look at that without slowing you up now. Get one of those uh, advertising lights and we'll hang it from right. a pole and just have a right. people's spotlight logo going across right. the field. Right. Okay, so where are we? With the bat light. <laughs> I guess we'll say go just do the East Grammy logo for now and research, put it on later if we need to, or we'll offer a sign or something. Something like that. that agenda or sign is more advertising now. I think I mean, the sign can always be an option. Up, up, up. Yeah. You know, I think right. if that's, I mean, that's what I see in, you know, in most districts, it's the signage. And, you know, so if you're all looking to advertise, as to Mr. Corcoran's point, the tarp comes off, yep. but your sign stays up there. for a rain delay. You know? True. Yeah, the tarp comes off and you don't see it after during the game, so. I was just saying if they really wanted it on the tarp, do you just keep the old tarp till we kind of have a little bit more so we don't use the tarp and then... I think they really want to get a nice new one, so they'll probably get it with the East Grammy logo for now. Um, I think that would be the, the, the easiest thing right now gives us an opportunity to actually investigate how we want to approve it or approach it moving forward with other possibles because I think it certainly is something that can be um, utilized look on the other side we'll people feel that Amazon we'll park. Flip it over. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll look at other policies and other districts okay okay I'll add that to my list all right. <laughs> You're not doing anything, right? No, nothing. <laughs> I got two day you need that. I think the high school principal should help you. He's very helpful. Considering that the <laughs> not allowed to speak during these meetings. <laughs> yeah. Now he looks sorry he stayed. <laughs> the knee has to do So he's got plenty of time left. <laughs> the sun's down. <laughs> Okay, some more on that in future meetings. Agenda for future meetings is superintendent's evaluation. Yes. Yes. I think we're late, right? Here, oh, I'm last year. Sorry. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, and also, what do we add? Oh, we add uh, the M and J transportation contract yeah, the to contract. the future meetings agenda as well. Yeah. Comments from visitors? Good chance. Seeing none. Um, and we're not going to executive session as number seven says, so we'll take that off. And I need a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Okay. Teamwork. <laughs> I know, I love it. I love it. I didn't even have to finish my sentence. Let's take a vote on it, everybody. All those in favor say aye. 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 I will see you. John? I said, I. Okay, very good. That I, was I, the I end of us. I, 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 I even threw my hand off. Nice. <laughs> 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 <laughs>